true masculine imperative is to find a battle worth fighting for. I'm telling the truth. I'm saying things to a 17 year old boy and he's going, he makes sense. If you don't know who Andrew Tate is, there's a very good chance a young man or boy in your life does. A guy will come to me and go, how do I get a girl? My like, bro, you're a loser. Yeah, but I know, but how do I get a girl? Well, you're a loser. All of my friends in social group know who he is. Everyone I work with know who he is. Everyone pretty much would know who he is. Is he pretty popular? Yeah, definitely. The British-American former kickboxer has accumulated millions of followers on social media, preaching a message of ultra-masculinity, that men must take charge to truly live. There are men out there who are afraid to tell their own woman Leave me alone, I'm busy. Give us some sense of how many young men and, and boys are sort of listening to this. Well, people around my age, probably around like 16 to maybe mid-20s, a lot of people would have heard about him. He's all over social media, he's all over TikTok. Tate and his brother now face legal challenges on two fronts. In Romania, they're charged with human trafficking and planning to sexually exploit women. And last month, the court approved their eventual extradition to the UK to face charges of sexual aggression. Tate and his money-making subscription channels have been pulled off YouTube and other platforms, with TikTok citing his hateful ideology. Go down together. One of them was speaking about how much they love Andrew Tate. His influence had a profound impact for former teacher Grace. She ended her five-year career in 2023 after she heard more and more talk of Andrew Tate during classes with 15 and 16 year olds. I had just said, look, I don't want to hear that name in this classroom. Um, I could see some of the girls rolling their eyes and sighing. Um, not only was it disrupting the learning, it was making everyone a bit uncomfortable. It wasn't a big class, 12 students, but she says there was an Andrew Tate core of three or four. Most of what was happening in my experience was of a sexual nature. Um, students making moaning noises in my classes, asking me inappropriate questions, asking personal questions about my age or my appearance, and then obviously asking me about Andrew Tate repeatedly throughout lessons. Grace says she was told to use teaching techniques to handle the problem, but the behaviour didn't stop. She left the school. Yeah, it's... Very disappointing um, that I don't really feel safe in a classroom anymore. Even though I want to be there to stand up for the young girls, it just wasn't my mental health was suffering my whole, like, I just couldn't be in those classrooms anymore and I couldn't take it. Grace is not alone. Researchers from Monash University interviewed women teachers about the impact of Andrew Tate in Australian classrooms. The sample size was limited, 30 teachers, but the experiences were strikingly similar. We're talking teachers from rural towns in you know, regional Australia to metropolitan schools, elite private schools um, in Melbourne, for example. Um, what they were telling us is that Andrew Tate was showing up in their classroom in a range of ways, which was indicating to us that this figure was having a significant influence on how boys were, I guess, thinking about the way that they have relationships with women and girls. Andrew Tate has nearly 9 million followers on X, formerly Twitter. He was the fourth most searched topic in Google Australia's news category last year. In the past, he famously said, I am absolutely sexist and I'm absolutely a misogynist. A woman must learn that her man is f***ing an iron mountain and the easiest path is to obey. Any other kind of resistance simply doesn't work. The women in our study are telling us that that is showing up in the way that their students are treating them. That is coming directly from the teachings of Andrew Tate online. But there's nothing inherently wrong with those teachings, according to these young men we spoke to in a suburban Melbourne mall. Men are meant to be masculine in life, they're meant to uh, pay for things, they're meant to be the bigger person in a relationship, they're meant to protect the girlfriend, the partner, whatever, stuff, stuff like that. Do you think men are getting a lot of mixed messages now? Yeah, yeah, so definitely men are getting mixed mess messages, but it's because it resonates with younger men because that's sort of what they aspire to be. They want to, it's big money, big goals, big dreams, and they want to achieve that themselves. So he says men are superior to women. What he means is like, 
you know, men should dominate the relationship and help the woman to inspire what she wants to be. So let's kick in. Groups like Tomorrow Man work with young men to develop a healthier version of masculinity. It's a pretty confusing time, more than ever now, to be a bloke. Young men in Australia and older men in Australia are confused about what it means to be a man. What should I be? Should I be that old school stereotype? When should I be that? Or should I be this new age guy that's able to express his emotions and talk about his emotions? And it's in that search for what it means to be a man, Harkin believes, that Andrew Tate finds his audience. In that complexity where people are confused, there's ambiguity, the role of men in society is changing. You've got right pickings for someone like Tate to come in and say, here's my lightning rod, come to me, I've got the answers. It's Andrew Tate, it's a lot of those male influencers, it's the adult males who are following on from that and creating podcasts that are then being dispersed. Holly Metcalf is another teacher who decided the constant battle with Andrew Tate's ideology just wasn't worth it. After a 16-year career, she walked away in 2023. You see two sort of different sets of, 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 of girls in a classroom now, the really, really quiet ones who are too afraid to say anything, and the girls who are mimicking and uh, probably not even aware of it, but they're, they're following suit with those boys and they're being just as volatile and hostile and backing those boys up in those spaces because it means they're not a target. So did all of this contribute to your decision to step away from teaching? Yeah, I think definitely. It was like being in an emotionally abusive relationship towards the end. I was in an emotionally abusive relationship with my job. I would walk into a classroom that I had dreaded going in and I would smile and everybody gets a fresh start and I would try and talk to these students and I would try and engage with them, but they already had my number. Metcalf believes it's a problem schools don't take seriously enough. And if it doesn't get solved, more women teachers will follow her and quit. It's a female dominated industry and we're not looking after women. Why would they stay?